Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp channel and in this video I'm going to show you that how you can deal with nested observables in SwiftUI and we're going to be covering that how you can make sure that your view is refreshing when your nested observable is changing. This example is taken from Stack Overflow. That's the actual question, the actual code that I pasted from Stack Overflow and I'll have a link to that post also so that you can take a look at it. So let's go ahead and take a look at this code. Now the first thing you will see is we have a class called Expense Tracker and since this code was written before iOS 17, that's why they're not using the observable macro, which is available in iOS 17. So they're using the observable object. We have two different published properties, the name and expenses. Now, if you look at the expenses, expenses is also defined as an observable object. So we have one observable object, which is expense tracker, and which contains another observable object, which is expenses. And expenses has a name and it has another published property called items, which is a struct, which is an expense. Okay, so what exactly is the problem? I mean, everything's fine, right? Well, let's take a look at an example. Inside my content view, I want to create an of expense tracker. Now I can use in one just the state object. So state object private var expense tracker and that is an expense tracker. So we're just going to go ahead and create an instance of expense tracker. Okay, so all of this is fine right now. Now what I also want to do is display the expenses and also the ability to add a new expense. So how do I display the expenses? Well, let's go and iterate. We'll say list expense tracker dot and we can get access to expenses but expenses itself is not an array right i mean you can see right there expenses is simply another object which is of type observable object which is right here so in order to go through it i'll say expenses dot items this will be an actual expense so i can go ahead and display that expense, so expense.name. Now, if I display it, and since we have some dummy expenses, you can see three different expenses being displayed. These are the same expenses that were added as hard-coded values for items, so that's what we're displaying. Now, what if I have another button over here, and this is saying add expense, so we're trying to add a new expense. So the first thing we will do is create an expense. So expense will be expense, we'll say name of the expense. The name of the expense can be whatever, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna say I'm buying a bread or something. Type will be category, which is groceries. Cost is deletable, doesn't really matter. And now I can go ahead and use expense tracker dot expenses dot items dot append and append a brand new expense. Now, keeping in mind that expense tracker itself is an observable object, but expenses also is an observable object. So if I go ahead and press on this button to add an expense, hmm, nothing really happens. You can see their expense is not really added. Well, the first thing I would start thinking that, okay, is the expense even added to the items? So expense tracker dot expenses dot items dot count. Let's go ahead and just print out the count so that we know that it's being added or not. Add expense. Okay, so count is four. We got three items over here, and the fourth one we just added. So this means that it was added in the items because it's four, not three. So that's not the issue. The items is getting changed. The new expense is getting appended. The problem is that the UI is not getting refreshed. So if you're using observable object or nested observable object, and in this case, the expenses is getting changed because one of the published properties is getting changed, 
this particular change does not bubble up and go and tell the expense tracker that, hey, something got changed. So that change is kind of like only for the expenses. There is an object will change event which will be fired over here, but that doesn't really go up till the expense tracker. So now the question is, well, okay, this is a problem. And how can we fix this problem? Well, one way to fix this problem is to simply start using our observable macro. But let's say that we're not really doing that. I will show you how you can do that. But let's say that we are targeting iOS 16 or some other iOS version that does not support observable. So how can we fix it with the current thing that we have right now? That's a problem, right? Well, one of the ways to fix this problem is to create or compose smaller views. So what do I mean by smaller views? Well, over here, so on line number 44, we can start building our smaller view that's going to encapsulate the expenses. So what we're trying to do is we are going to create targeted view which is going to be listening to or which is going to be tracking the another observable which is expenses. So if I go over here and say struck uh, expense list view which is a view and this means that it should have a body property expense list view obviously we're going to change that uh, let me go ahead and also remove this print line this is kind of annoying and send this like this here we go okay so expense list view is going to be responsible for displaying you the expenses and what we're going to do is we're going to be passing in the expenses which is of type expenses and since we want our expense list view to always refresh or re-render whenever the expenses are changed, we are going to be using observed object. And that's the important part to use observe object. If you don't use observe object, then whenever I'm going to create a list over here, it's not going to be refreshed. Basically, expense list view is not really going to be re-rendered. So we create the list. Now we don't really have anything called expense tracker. So I'm just going to remove the expense tracker. And there you have it. Now I can go back and remove this list and I can say expense list view and I can pass in the expenses, which is expense tracker dot expenses, which is also an observable object. So now we have created a very targeted view to show you the expenses, which is right here. Let's go ahead and add an expense. And now you can see that if I add an expense, it actually goes ahead and show me the expenses. Because what's going on is that this particular view, which is your expense list view, is now tracking changes in the expenses. And expenses are getting changed because you are adding something to the items. And whenever you add something to the items, it's like, oh, expenses has changed. So let me go ahead and re-render this view. So it goes over here checks what needs to be re-rendered, and then it re-renders those items or those views, which in this case is a list view, okay? So this is one of the nicer ways of solving these problems. Now I've seen people like trying to implement object will chain, trying to fire this on your own. If you want to solve this problem in a Swifty way, a Swift UI way, then you have to start breaking down your views into smaller views and making sure that in your smaller views, which is right here, only pass the information that the view needs. Because if you pass the information what it needs, which we're doing it right now over here, then the tracking will be working much nicer uh, as compared to if you're passing a lot of stuff that the view doesn't really need. So only pass the stuff that it needs, all right? So this is how you will solve this. Now I talked about it that, well, what if you're not using observable? I mean, what can you do in those cases? So let me show you what you can do in those cases. So I'm gonna remove some of the code, but I think you already know and understand what exactly is going on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and comment out this part and go back to the previous part right here. And I think we will call using expense tracker, right? So we're gonna go back to 
where everything was and everything was not really working in this case. So if I say at expense, you can see again, it's not really working. Now, if you're using iOS 17, then you should still use this approach of creating smaller views, definitely. But you can also solve this problem by not using observable object in iOS 17, but by using observable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add the observation framework. And instead of using observable object, I'm gonna just use the observable macro. And when you're using observable macro, you don't really have to use published. It's already known that these are the properties that will be published. So anytime you see observable object, we're just gonna replace it with observable. Now this is for iOS 17, or this is if you're wanting to use observable framework and observable, this is how you would do it. Instead of observe object over here, now we have observe object. Now in this case, we don't really need anything, right? I mean, you can just do it like that and that will be okay. This will become more of a state instead of a state object. So the only thing that we have done is we remove the observable object protocol. We are now using the observable. We are using the observable over here. We remove the published properties. And instead of state object, we're using state. Uh, this uh, environment can be, you can use in, in the environment object or environment, I mean, environment object or environments, that's fine, but we're just using a local state over here. So after making these changes, and this is for iOS 17, if I add an expense, you can see that it just works with our, even with our previous solution. So you have two options if you want to, or if you are still on iOS 16 and you don't really have access to the observation framework, then you can use the techniques that I showed you earlier on, which is basically creating targeted views. Uh, if you are on iOS 17, then you can use techniques of just decorating with observable macro and it will work. So there you have it, nested observable in Swift UI and how to deal with them. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then check out my website, adamsharp.school. Adamsharp.school hosts one of the largest catalogs for iOS development. Uh, let's take a look at all the courses. I mean, these are amazing courses, iOS related courses, full stack iOS bootcamp, MV design pattern, and many more. Now you can buy these courses with their individual price, as you can see listed over here, or you can simply become a pro member. And most of the people who signed up, they become pro member because look at all the different things you get by being a pro member. You get all the courses, all the current courses and the future courses that are around like 130 plus hours. You also get 50% off on workshops. So these are live workshops. They happen every couple of months and you get 50% off. You also get monthly Q&A. So this is like a session that I host uh, every month where all the members, and it's only for the members, pro members can join in. And you know, it's kind of like a meet and greet and they can talk about their problems that they're facing if you need career advice. So we do like a monthly uh, Q&A session also. You get access to the digital books and much more. And check out uh, Becoming a Pro, check out the courses, there are some workshops that are coming up. You can see the workshop. These are very, very popular workshops. I have a unit testing workshop, so a fundamental workshop, and also the vapor workshop coming up in July. All right. So definitely check it out. Thank you so much. And thank you for your support.